If you want to get physically tough, get as physically fit as you can. Get as strong as you possibly can. Get as explosive as you possibly can. Footwork, all that stuff. But here's how also we get tough. We got to be able to grind. That's part of toughness too. Now, the stuff we're going to do over the next six weeks and on this summer, that's what we're going to focus on, that grinding part. Men, we're not here to make you physically fitter. I can't promise it, even after all the times that Omri and I come out here, any of you will be able to jump any higher. You won't. Or any of you will be able to run any faster. That's what we coach in the back. That's one of the things they're going to do. But when you're with us, when we're getting physical, we're going to grind. We're going to get after it. We're going to push ourselves to get better and better and better. That's how we get tougher, to be able to push through that adversity. We're just going through one full set. One set, push-ups, flutter kicks, mountain climbers, jumping jacks in the bridge, one time through. One team, one heartbeat. Here's what that means though, Nick. If we're doing push-ups, everyone goes down at the same time, everyone comes up at the same time. If we're doing flutter kicks, everyone's got their left foot up, everyone's got their right foot up together. It also means we stay lined up in perfect rows, perfect comps, not pretty good. Yeah, we're perfect. We're lined up front to back, we're lined up side to side. Do that and we're done, one set. This is entirely up to you how long this takes. One team, one heartbeat. One, two, three, four. All right, man, stop. One, two, three, four. Nick, Nick. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, Nick, mountain climbers. Mountain climbers, two, three, six. All right, Nick, get up. If I'm holding you accountable, what am I doing it for? To make you better so the team is better. And if someone's holding me accountable, what are they doing it for? To call me up for the standard, make the team better. It's that simple. Ready, attack. One, two, three. 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 What can you control? Can you control being tough? Can you control being disciplined? Can you control being selfless? That's who we are as an organization. That's who we are as a team. Celebrate! Who is late? Make it easy. Yellow jumping jacks. Hey! Jumping jack! What part of jumping jack? Push up. Push up! When we do it again, it should take four minutes. This should just be, hey, everyone's on the same page. We're all in sync. We all know what the plan is. Boom, we all stick the jumping jack. So some of you, make sure we stay fresh. Next time we're coming back, we're gonna be doing some more stuff. So make sure you guys are ready. Today, we just wanna focus on being a great teammate. If we don't have being a great teammate down, none of the other matters. Yeah, you can be an effective communicator, you can be tough, and we can even have some great leaders in this team. Everyone on this roster has gotta be a great teammate. When we go back in that class when we're talking about what great teammates do, hopefully y'all know the answer, but we wanna get you all to see it right in person a little bit before about how we set the example, right? How we hold each other accountable. Family on one! Ready, one! Family! Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Monice Arena on the campus of Michigan State University. It is time for hockey. Michigan State back home again to face Notre Dame. First game of a weekend series here in East Lansing. We celebrate Spartan Hockey Zone Scott Moore on his 1,000th game called for MSU Hockey tonight. We are underway here at Mon Ice Arena. Martin's playing some good defense in the neutral zone too. Forced Notre Dame back into their own zone. Now the Spartans get the takeaway. Oh. Great move by oh. Jagger Joshua. Trying to tip it in short side was Notre Dame and it's smothered by Dylan St. Cyr. Zone to your right. Russell got it right out in front. Let's see what they can do here. Right down the middle, knocked down by St. Cyr. Notre Dame gets a man back. Back yes. shot. Goal for Michigan State. This one will stick. Just out of the reach of Russell, who's at the end of a shift. His place will be taken by yes. Davenport and stepping out in front to score is Michigan State. It's two to nothing. Yeah, Eric Middendorf puts one in. Yeah. 
Davidson taps it up to the blue line. Fire oh. down the ice. Empty net goal for Nico Mueller. And that should be the icing on the cake. Nice goal. We need to celebrate Title IX every year, but especially now on an anniversary like this, because some of the parents and I think some of the kids have no idea what it was like before, because all they know is what they have right now. Women deserve what the men have in terms of, we're people just like they are. So I think it's very important that people are reminded of Title IX and what it was like before Title IX. That was huge. And that's one of the things that Susie does such a good job of, introducing coaches or athletes that played back in the day when they didn't have everything that they wanted. I remember Coach brought back one of the first teams here at Michigan State, and they talked about just getting in a van taping their own ankles. So they were their own athletic trainer, their own bus driver, you know, going to their, their games. And I, they're, the, they're the warriors that fought for us and got this program to where it is. When you honor the people that came before you, that's what life's really all about. And especially in women's sports, when you look back, it's like I'm sitting in a chair with the opportunities that I have because someone else sacrificed for me to have this opportunity for the resources that women have now. So I've always thought it's important to one, bring them back to create that sisterhood. I also think it's important for our girls, especially today, that they need to know there was sacrifice prior to them and the guys that wore the jerseys before them were the ones that really laid it for your opportunities for charter planes and national TV and fans in the crowd and promotion. I mean, all that stuff didn't happen because you got here. It happened because someone else laid it for you. Judd Heathcote and I and Daryl Rogers were hired at the same time. I was teaching here in the Kentwood School System in Grand Rapids, and uh, Dr. Jackson was here doing uh, classes because I was working on my permanent teaching certificate. And I had probably three classes with her three consecutive years, and she just simply called me one day out of out of nowhere, I think it was in August, because she was on her way to the 1976 Olympics. She called and asked if I'd be interested in coaching women's basketball there. And after I dropped the phone, I said yes, and uh, went down and had an interview, and that's where it all began. I think initially I was scared to death. It was just like, well, I've just come from teaching middle school, and I'm now, I'm now at Michigan State, you know, coaching. I just wanted to make sure that I did what I could to show her that I was a person that needed to be there. And after that, it just became very easy because of the personalities that I recruited. That just made it all the easier. We weren't in the Big Ten Conference, women weren't. When it came to the end of the season, we had uh, state tournaments. So, I mean, it was everybody. All the colleges that were in Michigan were in that, in whether they were division one or two. And then we went to regionals which was kind of the Big Ten at that time. The AIW Nationals was 16 teams that went, I think we had the first one in Minneapolis, and, and my team, fortunately, was a really good team. I got really lucky with the players that I had. So we were in the national tournament that time with the 16 top teams in the country. When women went from the AIW to the NCAA, it was 1982, I believe, Playing in the Big Ten was really challenging, and, and that's what made it so much fun. And, and I think that's what drew a lot of the better athletes to Big Ten Conference schools. Judd was the men's basketball coach at that time. You'd see them get on their planes and go, and, and we were taking our station wagons home. The irony of it was we were playing the exact same schedule, the same teams, because we were in the Big Ten, traveling to the same places and yet not being able to, to have the money to eat properly or, you know, or eat, we're eating fast food there at a sit-down dinner. And Title IX was such a huge thing. That was the big difference. You know, all of a sudden we had gym time, we had enough basketballs, we had nice uniforms, all of that sort of thing that, that sound kind of picky right now as I say them, but it was huge.
Then there were a lot of rule changes that were going on too. The three-point line came into view. Women's basketball went to a smaller basketball because of the weight of the ball and the, the size of women's hands versus men's and that sort of thing. My first couple years we played in the what is now the I Am Circle and we had maybe 10 parents there. In my last home game at the Breslin Center, we had over 10,000 for the first time. So that was changing incredibly fast as well. well I really like Coach Karen Langland's style as a coach. She sits on the, on the bench and doesn't get too excited about things, but here you can tell she's got the attention of all of her players and she's just gonna tell them, go with what we've been doing. I looked up to Karen. She was someone that I confided in, someone that became a mentor for me, someone I admired and looked up to for many years in the business. Um, and certainly when I was a kid, trying to get here and, and catch her attention, you know, I feel like I've always chased Karen's approval in some way. I remember Max Ann Reese and uh, Kristen Rasmussen and even Keisha Kelly. I just remember coming to the games and watching them play. And when I was a young little girl, I thought, I want to be like them when I grow up. I was very fortunate to have really good people, women, on my team. I mean, and I'm not to say they were all perfect, nor were they all great athletes, but whether they were walk-ons or starters or stars, they were just good people. And the teamwork was incredible from my perspective. Winning the Big Ten means that you've had a really good team, and they were very competitive, very good, and just outstanding young women, who I still am in contact with, whatever, many years later. For as long as she was here, she endured. She endured a lot of things when the women's game really hadn't gotten there yet. And I think myself and, and Joanne really benefited from her struggles and her challenges and what she tried to do here over time. I enjoyed teaching the game more than anything else. And a lot of people would say I liked practices better than games. I keep always going back to the people that I worked with and I worked for, and that was the stuff that really made a big difference. It was a great time to be a woman athlete and to be a woman's coach at that point. In anything you do, whether it's basketball or whatever, any job, to be able to teach women how to be better in whatever it is, and then watch them get into a game situation and perform that way. It had a, a really big impact on my life. Coaching Trey was really fun. I always focused on the things that were not so much basketball related. in terms of his attitude and how he engaged his teammates and getting others involved, how he responded to the officials. Those were the things that I really focused on because I knew for a long, long time that he had something special that kids his age did not have. The bond between me and my mom is great. She's like a coach, a mom, she's a best friend all in one. She just does everything for me. She helps me with like schoolwork, basketball. We have a really, really special relationship. I mean, I have a, a special relationship with both of my sons, but Trey, you could tell right away when you talk about early on, He's always been that kid with a good heart. I wanted to make sure that that was never being taken advantage of by his friends, by his coaches, by those around him. So not to be a helicopter parent, but I wanted to make sure that I was there for him. When my husband came along, he wanted to make sure that he could be that example for my boys to see a man going to work being a father figure at home, listening, relating to them in a way that I didn't. It's definitely uh, a team effort with him and times that Trey doesn't want to hear what I have to say, he'll bounce it off Andre and Andre will essentially say what I'm saying, but in a different way. And Trey can relate to that as men. 
at the age of three, I started playing basketball. I started both of my sons playing. My oldest son, Marquise, he's 23 now, but I used to do fundamentals with him when he was about seven or eight and Trey would be the youngest kid in that group. So he pretty much started then, and everyone that attended would be amazed that he can make a shot with the 28.5 ball and a 10-foot rim. So he's done that since three. He played on a team probably that next year at four years old, and he played three levels up. My mom was a player. She played at the University of Minnesota. She was a, a hustle player. Uh, you know, she got rebounds. She didn't really score a lot, but she was a big time defensive player. I think that's where I got it from. I went to high school, I started playing AAU, and that started my path of really being seen, traveling throughout the country, um, playing AAU national tournaments, and through playing AAU and going to a couple of Blue Star camps, I was seen by the coach at the University of Minnesota, LaRue Fields. That started my recruitment. So I knew a lot about the journey of it all, just from what I was able to do, and then my coaching career helped me to deal with the whole coaching and recruitment aspect of it all. So I was able to really guide Trey, but you know, things were ultimately his decision. I just wanted to make sure that coaches knew that he had parents that were involved and that he was a good kid. It means a lot playing point guard here. There was some past point guards that were great, like Cassius, Mateen, Tum Tum, AJ now. All of those guys, like, they are just helping me. They are guiding me. They telling me what to do, you know. It's just a great feeling. It worried me with him going away to school initially because I was like, well, you know, who's gonna be that pillar for him? But it also made me feel good to know that he was with someone like Coach Izzo and his staff. I see a lot of the things that Coach Izzo do off the court that I did and, and or try to do with my players to build that relationship. So the coaching staff has been phenomenal. And I constantly tell Trey, you know, trust your coaches. And if you don't know, go and ask, you know, to get clarification. And, and he's done that. He's been doing an awesome job. What I learned from my mom was just to trust my work, be coachable, and do the little things right, and things will go good for me. It is time for hockey once again. And once again, the same matchup as we had last night, Michigan State versus Notre Dame. And if we can at least get half of a game that we had last night, the fans that are here are in for a treat. Everybody knows in college hockey how hard it is to sweep, Scott. So uh, we got our hands full here against the Notre Dame team that's fighting for their NCAA playoff life. They're fighting for position in the Big Ten. It's so tight. This will not be a walk in the park, Scott. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a grind, but it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Dubinsky gains the red line, dumps it in. Rebound came right out. Up top to Basco, over to the left side once again. Yes. Goal. Shot. Goal. That was a missile from the left circle. The Spartans make the Irish pay. Driving in Davidson. Yes. Over to the near side. Goal for Michigan State. Nico Mueller on senior night. Spartans on the power Goal. play. Good yes. yardy. Go. Still time for the Irish. This is over to the far boards. Strand coming in. Shot oh. safe made oh. by St. Cyr at the top of his crease. Michigan State with the sweep of the Irish. 
the final score. Michigan State 3, Notre Dame 2. Oh, that feels good. We ask you to direct your attention to the video board as we begin our senior night ceremony in recognizing our Spartan hockey seniors. <laughs> Let's go.